Good morning, Internet. This is the old fat dad, and welcome back to another beautiful but rainy day on the Goober Nation gun range. Today, I've got kind of an important question for you guys. Cheap Chinese optics, are they trash or hidden treasure? Let's find out. So while we're waiting for this little, ah, just a little dribble of a downpour to pass by, let's go over uh, this particular Chinese optic that I'm gonna be taking a look at here. And um, before I get too deep into this, let me, let me tell you what I'm looking for in pretty much any optic. Um, that's gonna be four things. So first is features. Does it have what I want? If it doesn't, why am I bothering with it? Second is price. Does it fit within the budget? Is it a good bang for your buck? Third, is it reliable? Is it gonna do what it says it does every time and not break down on you instantly? And fourth, in the rare chance that it does break down, how's the customer service? Do they back up their product? With regards to cheap Chinese optics, let's take a look at this offering from Go Wooter. This is their A17, kind of a generic name and branding. Uh, and we'll start with features for this guy. So what are the features with this optic? Right here we can see they offer Shake Awake. They have a very common footprint. Uh, it says that it's built ruggedly. Can we test that out? A little bit. And then, oh, what's the last one? Oh, we got the uh, brightness settings. It's got all sorts of different brightness settings, which is nice to have. I don't have night vision, but they claim, I think, that there are two night vision settings on the optic. So for our first category, this particular optic, does cover it. Really what I want is something that's easy to mount. You don't have to mess around with a bunch of different plates and screws. It's gonna fit a lot of different things. I love the shake awake feature that saves on battery life. Really convenient to have. It says it's rugged. I guess we'll see about that. And then of course all the different settings are nice to have. In the box as well, it comes with some goodies. It has a nice little cover that can protect your optic when it's not in use. It does have a Picatinny uh, rail mount that comes with it as well which is nice and then all the little doodads and bits to get it mounted and a little cleaning cloth and all that other good stuff so yes this particular optic does have the features so next thing on the list then is does it fit within the budget now I know some of you guys are big baller types and spend all sorts of money on your optics but as an old fat dad I'm cheap I like to get the most that I can for the least amount of money and on first blush, this seems to fit the bill. These are around $100 MSRP, I believe. They go on sale a lot. I believe this one can be had for 80 sometimes. So for a micro red dot with those features, I feel like that's a pretty good cost. That fits within the budget. Third on the list, reliability. Is it reliable? Well, if you've watched my previous video, I was looking at the Smith & Wesson MMP57 and I had this exact optic mounted on that pistol and I feel like it did not do good it moved around I had it zeroed I'd shoot some the zero would change it was uh, <laughs> it was a little bit frustrating and I got kind of angry with it and I took it off and I put it away for a while the folks at Go Wooter saw that review and they reached out to me proactively and sent me a brand new site so now I've got two of these things so we don't know about reliability at this point but we're gonna put it to the test and finally, the fourth, customer service. I mean, I put out a video about it, so I know I'm not probably the typical customer service representative, but uh, you know what? You can't ask for a company uh, to have better customer service than to proactively send you a new one when you complain that the old one is messed up. So, you know, I think for now, they've got pretty good marks. Now let's see if their new red dot actually is any good. Here's the old red dot, and I've got it mounted on my Taurus TX-22 Compact. And as you can see, it does have very nice big buttons here to control the brightness up and down. It's got our little uh, adjustments for windage and elevation right up there and there, and it does come with a little tool to adjust those. This is actually the red dot that wasn't working on the uh, Smith & Wesson. So we're going to give it another chance on the Taurus tx 22 a week ago i zeroed it at about seven yards so let's so uh let's go see if it uh, held that zero and then we'll try out the new one okay we've got our plates set up at seven yards got the go wooder on our shooter let's see how she does i'm gonna take it nice and slow big to small we'll see where we land aiming for the center of the plate that one's a little off to the left 
That one's right on though. Still a little off to the left, but uh, pretty close. Let me see if I can go a little faster and still hit these plates here. Here we go. Hmm. Okay, so it looks like it might be holding up okay. Let's finish off this magazine, see if it still gives us good shots here. You know what? That wasn't too bad. So it might have been that the Smith & Wesson was just kind of a boogered up little uh, pistol. Might have been uh, I was frustrated or maybe just that little bit of difference between the 22 and the <laughs> 5.7 was enough to mess up this red dot. I've got a solution though. We got this on a 22 right now. I've got the brand new one on a 9mm so let's see if it can hold up to the 9. Now I've got the high point yeet cannon, the C9, with our little Go Wooter red dot on top of it, using the Picatinny rail adapter that they so helpfully provided. And uh, this thing for a 9mm kicks a good bit. It's also probably called the yeet cannon because, as the kids say, I would love to yeet this into the woods it's so terrible but it's what we got today we're gonna run with it and uh, we'll see I've previously zeroed this red dot as well we'll see if it holds at zero and maintains at zero through our course of fire here which is not gonna be too strenuous we're gonna go slow again and just uh, run the plates and see if we can hit them all with the the lovely yeet cannon so here we go seven yard line We'll go Wooter, hold up to the brutal recoil of the Yeet Cannon. Big plate first. All right, looking good. Not too bad. Okay, it's uh, it's holding up. I, uh, I'm impressed. <laughs> and uh, there we go on that third round. Look at that. Got a little uh, got a little jammy poo there. So let's clear that out here and uh, get a couple more rounds. Let's see if we can. Oh, lovely. How many rounds got jammed in there? Let's see if we can run those plates one more time. I think, yeah, I got three more. We'll see if we can do it a little quicker. If the, the old yeet cannon will let us. Let's see what happens. Ow. Yeah. It's not fun to shoot, but I think, I think the old little, uh, Red Dot did it. I, uh, I want to do some more though. Let's see if it holds up. We're going to do uh, another mag of... Jeez, oh, oh Pete's. Look at this thing. I didn't even realize it. On the last round, jammed again. Okay, <laughs> let's load up a mag. I don't think anything's going to happen fast with the Yeet Cannon, but we're going we're gonna give to give her a rip here and see if we can get through another mag and keep that zero. Round two with the ye old Yeet Cannon. And go Wooter, come on, Let's go Wooter a shooter if it can not jam up, yeah, maybe, come on, baby. El Jamomatic is cleared, here we go. Ah, didn't get that last one. Looks like I'm trending a little bit low, I don't know if that's me shooting quickly or if it's the uh, red dot. I'm going to slow it back down, see if I can get one exactly on target where I'm aiming here. All right, deep breath, take it slow. Am I dropping my shots or is it the red dot? Okay, that was a good trigger pull. Didn't move, but can I get it to shoot? <laughs> I think we're still on. We're still jamming too, son of a gun. Why do you hate me, High Point? What have I ever done to you? A little low there. Try and do the ah, son of a gun again. All right, I want to get one right in the middle of that little plate there. Let's see if I can do it. Now yeah, it was off. Uh, it was low and right. I'm a little bit unsure right now if it's the red dot dropping the shots or if it's me, because uh, this is like a 32 pound trigger pull here. <laughs> Jeez, oh Pete's. Hey, hey, hey. One more mag, I'm gonna keep it on that big plate. 
try and take it nice and slow and uh, we'll see if this is if this is dropping the shots or not or if it's me all right big plate nice and slow aiming for the dead center Well, we got three in a row off before I jammed there, and uh, they stacked right on top of each other. Uh, let, me, let me pull you off here. I don't know. Can we see it from here or right over there? Let's see. We'll bring you over here. Check it out here. So we just managed to stack three in a row right there in the middle. That's, that's pretty good. Um, I can't handle shooting this thing anymore. <laughs> It is just not cooperating. If we have any high point whispers out there in the audience, you know what? Am I doing something wrong? Do I need to do like a special ritual before I shoot this thing to get it to run? Let me know. I've heard they're dependable, but uh, it's not been my experience. I need a little palate cleanser here after that awful experience with the high point. Jeez. Not too bad. Looks like it's holding zero pretty darn good. You know what? I gotta take back the, the bad things I said about this little red dot in my previous video. I think this is actually probably a, a decent red dot. Uh, more than likely, as you guys saw with our lovely high point here, uh, you know when things start to go wrong and you're getting jams and your, your firearm's not working like you, you wanted it to work, it gets in your head and, and you don't shoot as good and I think that might have been what was happening with the um, the Smith & Wesson there. It was it was malfunctioning, it was giving me issues and uh, I just uh, got flustered and I started pulling my shots and, and not having good accuracy despite my optics. So you know what, I'm going to say that um, maybe this is a little bit more reliable than I expected. Another YouTuber that I'm uh, quite fond of just did a review of these as well that was uh, Buffalo Outdoors and um, he didn't have any problems with his and he actually really enjoyed his little A17 Go Wooter Red Dot and uh, that's what made me want to revisit this and, and kind of pose the question are are these cheap Chinese Red Dots are they just intrinsically bad are they are they irredeemable just for the fact that they're low cost and uh, made in a country that maybe sometimes doesn't have the best manufacturing processes and I'm gonna say I'm gonna say I don't I don't think so I don't necessarily think they're all gonna be bad you know what every company is making optics in China um, SIG has their red dots in China Vortex makes their red dots in China Holosun is a Chinese red dot company pretty much everybody is is doing it but uh, you know the ones that get picked on are these these new budget brands and and at one point hollow sun was that budget brand and now now look at them for the time being i'll keep on running this and uh see how it does but i've got no reason to think that it's a uh, a, a bad optic like i initially thought it seems to um nail all those points talked about before it's got the features you want it's in the price range that uh is just amazing for the features that it's got um so far reliable and uh, definitely definitely more reliable than the dang high point and uh, the customer service turned out to be pretty darn good um, they were proactive and responsive and uh, I got no complaints so go Wooder good job keep it up and uh, maybe one day you'll be the new Hollison that's all I got for you today thanks for watching and we'll see you next time